Today we're here at Al Stutz Railroad. Al lives just east and south of Denver, Colorado, and he's built this beautiful 15-inch gauge railroad around his property. Al invited us to come down and operate our two brand new Cagney-style steel coaches on his railroad with his 1904 Cagney locomotive that he restored. Al's a very kind man, and we're going to take a few minutes here to interview Al and talk to him about his locomotive and his property and why he enjoys 15-inch gauge railroading. We're also going to take a little bit of time and let you see these Cagney cars in operation. We've got two cars completed. The first is the Heber City. The second is the Cheyenne. Both of these cars can be uh, built or custom designed for any of your needs, and if you're interested in knowing more about the cars, we hope you would contact us through our webpage. So enjoy a little bit of footage here from Al Stutz Railroad. We're going to take some time to interview Al in just a little bit and enjoy the footage of these beautiful uh, Cagney replica cars that we've built here at Wasatch Railroad Contractors. And we got all the kids here and all the adults and we're having a little fun running the train around the track here. We're going to have a little short demonstration of John's cars. We're going to get them out behind this engine and uh, see if we can't pull them around and get a little video of this engine pulling those cars. This engine is a 1904 Cagney. It actually served at the World's Fair in 1904. Uh, I bought it way back in the uh, early 90s. It took about seven years to restore it and it ran probably four times at Tiny Town before we brought it home and it's never been back up there again. So it's been right here. This train is very unusual in that it has engine brakes. None of the uh, miniature train engines had engine brakes. If you put the camera right down here we can see the toggle system that raises and lowers and actually pinches the brakes against the drivers. And because we have an air, air compressor on board the first car and air compressor lines going up to a control valve up here, the control valve is a portioning valve. And what it does, it puts a little or a lot of air back to the train. And all we need is 10 pounds on the train to release it, and it starts rolling. You dump the air, and it locks. Therefore, if we break a line on any of these cars, or they break away from the train, they lose their air, they roll to a stop. They don't continue to roll and roll and roll so fast that they go off the track. They go to a stop. What we're seeing here, is um, the plugs have been installed here. I didn't like the, all the stuff hanging off the steam dome, so I brought it inside, and it's the same thing. It's just out of sight when the cab <laughs> roof is on. So we're coming off here for our steam. This is the whistle we're coming off the top here for the steam for this injector. The, this is the quarter pin berthy way down here. Uh, the 3 8 is over on that side, comes right off of this one here. This is the blower blower. This is if you want to put air on and have an uh, air compressor act as a blower. Typical forward and reverse. I have a gauge here that shows the amount of steam going to the steam chest. And at one time I had a gauge, this was actually recording uh, steam down at the uh, steam chest, but I've since, since done away with that. Al, tell us what got you interested in this particular locomotive. Well, I got a call from my cousin. He knew I was looking for a locomotive, and he told me that he knew of one in Rockville, Indiana. So I went back and looked at it. Uh, belonged to the Wilson family. A fellow by the name of Paul Wilson showed it to me, and we negotiated the price. And it took a while to buy it because the money had to be split up split up between family members and uh, you know, there was some problems there but finally I got a call from Paul Wilson said they were ready to sell the engine uh, the engine was moved from Rockville Indiana to uh, Oakwood Illinois 
it sat there for almost a year before I finally got it moved out to here. And then it took seven years to restore it. Was it was it at all operational when you got it? Uh, at first I thought it was, but the more we looked into it, it had been just run to death. The, the tires were all dished out and thin. Uh, there was many things that were wrong with it. So we just took everything down to bare bones and started over. So everything on it has uh, been flame sprayed with metal, brought back to original tolerances and machined and uh, all done by Fred Schwoblin, Baker Boys Machine Works, uh, Baker Boy Locomotive Works. And uh, he did a marvelous job. He came out here when we finally got the engine uh, out here and he did the uh, valve timing right here at the track. And um, it's been right on ever since. finished five great days at the International Association of Amusement Park and Attractions National Convention here in Orlando, Florida. We do a lot of conventions and we try to bring as much equipment as we possibly can. The show's been a great show. It's absolutely huge. You can't imagine how many vendors are here. The building is just outrageous. We're pretty excited about the show schedule we have for 2011. So I'm going to just go over a couple of the events that we have scheduled get a chance, come on out and see us. We try to keep our schedule posted on the webpage as accurately as we can, so please come to our webpage from time to time and check the schedule out. Make sure that our, our schedule maintains the way that it should be. In January of 2011, we'll be attending the greatest hobby, the world's greatest hobby on tour show, which this year we'll be attending the Omaha, Nebraska show, which is scheduled for the middle of January. It's a really exciting show. That's a hobby show where you'll see a lot of model trains and different things like that. But we will have number two and the passenger car of that show, so if you'd like to see that equipment, you're more than welcome to come to that show. We will be attending the NARSO show, which is the National Association of Ride Safety Officials, here in Orlando, Florida, January of 2011. Now, at that show, I'm not going to be bringing any equipment, but I will be there talking about safety boiler inspections, locomotive inspections, and car inspections. So if you're interested in those types of areas, if you have equipment that needs to be inspected, you might want to come and visit us at that show. After that show, we're really excited about the Hillcrest and Watokia show in California, which is a great 15-inch gauge railroad. We're planning on taking locomotive number two, a passenger car, and maybe one other locomotive to that show where we will be operating on their extensive 15-inch gauge railroad. We're really excited about that show. We've never been to the Hillcrest and Watokia Railroad. We've seen it on YouTube. You can look it up for yourself as well. It's really a neat place. We're really excited to be down there with those guys and run trains and be part of the 15-inch gauge family. We're also attending the American Shortline Railroad Association's National Convention. In 2011, that convention will be held in Texas. If you're interested in the shortline activities that we work on, you may want to come and visit with us at that show in Texas. We will be attending the Old Thresher Reunion, which is held historically Labor Day weekend in Iowa. That's a huge show, one of the largest gatherings of uh, traction and steam tractors you'll ever see in your whole life. The parade at that show is just amazing to watch all the tractors 
parade around and see all the steam and smell the smoke. If you like coal smoke and the sound of steam and the smell of steam, you really need to attend the Old Fresher Reunion Labor Day weekend in Mount Pleasant, Iowa. We will be attending this IAPA convention, which for the next 10 years will be held here in Orlando, Florida. So we're really excited about that. We will be bringing equipment back next year for that show as well. And that's always held the third week of November, or the week just previous to Thanksgiving. If you get a chance to come down to Orlando and see us here at IAP, we'd love to see you here. Those aren't the only shows that we'll be doing this year. We've got three or four more that are tentatively scheduled, but I didn't talk about them here in this segment. So again, watch our webpage, wrrc.us, for a current list and schedule of the events that we'll be attending. So thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this segment about the Kagi trains and our great visit with Al Stutz at his railroad in Colorado. We'd like to thank him for his time. We'd like to thank the great IAPA folks for the great work that they do at this convention. And we'll look forward to seeing you at a, at a convention near you sometime in 2011.